A new and crucial project begins in today's episode, reinforcing our castle wall before it's too late. But as we dig, or should I say drill in, Whoa, big chunk. we find ourselves with another problem on our hands. You know what that means? A lot of work. A lot of work. Oh no. no. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, we're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since. And now, after moving from the USA to Portugal, we'll be documenting our entire journey of building our dreams as we transform a historic water mill into our first home, not on wheels. Join us as we embark on this new and exciting phase of life. Now, Let's take in a deep breath and let it out. Let the adventure begin. Oh, it's a tight one. <laughs> How are we going to get a whole crew in here? Well, that's the question, isn't it? This is looking a little unstable under here. It's the main issue that we're hoping to fix. Welcome back to another episode, guys. Basically, our next project on the list is reinforcing this stone wall that encircles the backside of the water mill. I was doing some research on ancient water mills, and what I learned is that this wall, which we have since dubbed our castle wall, and the cavity here that holds water that then shoots down and is what turned the wheel for our water mill, it's all part of an aqueduct system. and. And Monchique was actually settled by the Romans way back in the day. The history of this area is a little bit choppy because they suffered a huge earthquake back in the 1700s but I did learn that this water mill is a horizontal water mill, which is actually what they designed the turbines that create hydroelectric power today after. So it's pretty incredible that we get to live inside of a piece of history like this. But with that being said, it's also extremely important that we do all that we can to preserve it and make sure that it is safe. And this wall here behind us has a few key areas that need some reinforcement. So we got to call in a team of experts. We've actually had them out here. We've been looking at this whole idea of how we can reinforce that. A couple of you guys in the comments have said, well, with Nelson digging and using the excavator down here, removing all this material, doesn't that leave the integrity of the wall at question? And it could come collapsing, crashing down, tumbling into our house? The answer is yes. That's why this is a very important and urgent project, especially with the rains in the winter months. Granted, this has been here for hundreds of years, but still. Yeah, but before there was a big original slope. I'd kind of like this to be more flat, but maybe it's holding it up. I also noticed that the old wall here looks really, really well built and solid. But I do love what you were saying about the technology. This was the tried, true, and tested water mill that gave way to the technology that we now use to run our lives today. The big question that anybody who comes to this property has is, this is a water mill. How did they get the water up to this elevation when the river's way down there? So they had to run canals, channels, pipes, tubes, Aqueduct. a long direction to get to this point and somehow retain the water here that they could then open up a valve or lift up a gate and let it enter in to turn that wheel. And when we started exploring this water chamber, which was fed by the mill race, basically acting as a slide for the water current that turned the wheel, we realized that the inflow for water had been closed off. This was another one of those unique projects that we decided to tackle while Drew's parents were here this summer. And they definitely didn't hesitate to help us get all up in there. Finally getting to the water cistern that allows the water to flow down the chamber that turns the turbine that used to power the mill and allow people to grind their flour and corn. Wow. Look at that mess. <gasps> oh, it's razor sharp. You think I could crawl through that? You're the smallest. <laughs> That's your job. No way. You guys see this? We look like a bunch of crazy people looking in the hole of our house. Okay. You see the rebars? It's a thin well, rebar. we think so. Look at the picture. 
See, see. I think, if I recall, there was a steel oh, thing whoa. sticking in there. Right? Yeah. Remember when we were down yeah, yeah. in the bottom, there was a steel thing. So That's we how they channeled the it. So probably underneath the dirt under you must all be cement too, because they would yeah. fill this up like one large tank. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of pull me you back. Almost <laughs> I, pull, I just let him pull yeah. me up totally. Yeah, but then I was kind of pulling back. <laughs> we almost both ended up down in the water mill. <laughs> Brittany did volunteer to go all the way down in that hole. I will say that's not, that doesn't look that bad. With a rope and a harness. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't look that bad. When it comes to exploring the inner workings of our home and the inner workings of ourselves, it's important we have people we can rely on to help us move through whatever dark or difficult obstacles we're trying to move forward past. Which is why we are genuinely so grateful for the sponsor of today's episode, BetterHelp, who has helped over 4 million people connect with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and help you, or me, live a healthier, happier life. Having been in recovery from anorexia for over 14 years now, one thing that helped keep me on the path of recovery, especially in the beginning when I didn't even know if I wanted to recover or if I could, was having a therapist that I spoke with each week. It gave me a sense of consistency and held me accountable to open up about the things and feelings that my eating disorder would have otherwise used as a way to keep me quiet and small. What I love about BetterHelp is how easy and accessible it makes therapy. You just fill out a questionnaire that will help assess your specific needs, and after you're paired with a therapist, you can schedule sessions for whenever is most convenient for you. And whether you want to do on-the-phone therapy, video chat therapy, or even just messaging, it's all about doing therapy in a way that is comfortable for you. And because finding the right therapist can be tricky, they make it easy for you to switch if the first one you're paired with doesn't work out. If you think you might benefit from therapy, try BetterHelp using our link below. And by clicking that link, you will also receive 10% off of your first month of therapy. Know that we support you along your path, and we want to thank you for supporting us along ours. And now that we have a plan for bettering ourselves, how about we get back to bettering that wall? We can all use a little bit of help, I suppose. So what is the plan? So this is our diagram that Andy, our builder, drew up. We're going to actually make footings down here in the ground and then make boxes up against the wall supporting it anchored in with rebar cement. That way we can connect the two bases and boxes that will be against this wall creating support. Maybe not in this particular section, but in the sections that are way more unstable. Like Drew said, I think we have three guys coming tomorrow. Yeah. Andy was actually a German trained bricklayer, works with this kind of wall stuff and materials. And so he's going to be leading the charge, explaining to the rest of us laborers how exactly to do it. I'm really excited for this part of the project because we're like starting to get closer and closer to working on the inside of the mill. We're still working on a few more permits before we can start all of that. But along with doing this wall here, we want it to be draining well. Proper drainage in here is key. Everything has to go from this corner out that way. So there's a little science, a little math that has to be done here. If you like get close to the wall, it just feels like it's bulging out a little bit. Like the pressure of all the material on that side of it wants to push it this way. Yeah. So we're gonna be fighting gravity and like making the reinforcement so it's like wedged up on an angle here. Yeah, you can like shoulder it. Yeah. But not you personally, luckily. I don't have that kind of time to wait and stand here. <laughs> For all of time. <laughs> Look how tight that is down there. Oh geez. Also not sure how long this project will take, so. This might be a two-parter, three-parter, who knows? And this, this section too. Ooh. We had Nelson scoop out a bunch of earth, and then this is actually gonna be where the sewer tank has it's to go. It's gonna be inside the annex. Yeah. There's a reason for that. We'll get into that when we are on to the plumbing topic. So this is Terry here. We're working hard on the job today. We're trying to reinforce these walls back here. We're gonna work from the top and slowly get some of the material dropping down and filled into our trailer. You ready for this? Ready for this, bro. All right. So this is the material we're talking about. He's gonna go up top, use the crowbars and pry off this dirt so we can get it exposed. That way we can see how we can better reinforce in this area and get it filled into the trailer.
put up some wood for protection when I keep the house safe. That was a good one. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're making progress. <laughs> it's taking a lot of chiseling. These roots from the fig tree are really kind of getting in the way and so we're having to step through them. Two guys, two shovels, two picks, four muscles. All right, it's looking pretty good. You can see the new wall getting uncovered from all that material that was up there. Our wheels are looking a little bulged. There's a lot of weight in there. Come on, Tony. Come on, Nancy. We need to go dump our trailer. You can do it. Four by four. We're moving. I didn't put the tailgate on. Hopefully all the material holds in. I think we did all right there. All right, time to unload. Just kind of depositing all the material into this back area, rebuilding up this wall. That way it gives me a little more room in the back of the house back here. Next to our lumber yard. Nice work up there. <laughs> Look at that, the size of these roots we're having to cut in here. Terry was just telling me that if you get that on your skin, it burns, doesn't it? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't want to get that on us. Holy cow. But we love our fig tree, that's for sure. Absolutely. I was also learning from Terry that if you cut these new ones to propagate right now, it's the perfect season. You cut them off about here on a 45, wrap it with some wet paper towel, stick it in the ground, and you'll have figs next year. Oh, survived. Survived. <laughs> and look at the size of these rocks we're pulling out of this cavity here. back here. They are huge. We're taking any of the biggest rocks here, throwing them into the wheelbarrow, putting the smaller ones to take to the other area we showed you. And back here, I've been lining our wall around the drain pipe we made, making it nice and protected in case I'm driving through here. And that way I don't end up driving into the hole. I was always wondering where I was gonna get the rocks for that. Well, now I know. Making my way down from the camper to go see how the guys have been doing on day one of our retention wall reconstruction. I've been editing away up there and letting them do their thing because I think there's already a lot of cooks in the kitchen, if you know what I mean. So we just showed you all the work we've done, but we have one really big problem we discovered. Andy was here this morning, Terry and I, we were kind of observing all our situations for the project at hand. And behind me here, we're gonna have you take a closer look because we got a bit of an issue. I don't think I even know what I'm this is. I'm slightly regretting having Nelson dig all this out, and this is why. Mm. More than slightly. Yeah. <laughs> no. Come down here now. Oh guys, this makes me a little bit nervous. I have no idea what he's about to tell us. I hope it's nothing too bad. Or at least nothing we can't fix. So, squeeze around over here. I mean, I see some ginormous boulders. Yeah, those are big. <laughs> those are really big. So, see our annex right here? I see it. This wall is not secure. It's a bit of a danger even for us working right now. But if you come over here, you can see a huge crack is formed. But it goes right through here. And on the edge of that wall by the door over there, there's mm -hmm. another big crack going. 
What so do we do? we're a bit at risk that this could go that way oh. or this could potentially oh, right. come this way. So we're not touching any of this. We're just being very mindful that there's not going to be an earthquake today or Andy's <laughs> not going to throw me into the wall at some or <laughs> Terry's not going to throw me into the wall at some point today. <laughs> so this is what we're up against, or which me. means, yeah. <laughs> and you can see there's not a good base of rocks or foundation. This is pure soil down here so with erosion this whole wall could collapse and fall right into our upper bedroom oh, especially with that drying out now it's uncovered yeah. Right. Yeah. so this is going to have to be taken down at some point because we were looking at different ideas could we maybe reinforce it with bars which is a possibility but truly the best way is to take that down and you know what that means rebuilding it a lot of work a lot of work oh yeah. no so we're gonna focus on this project right now <laughs> okay. but know that that's a huge issue well i guess that's a whole future episode series <laughs> Jeez. i mean these are such oh. beautiful I mean, heavy stones no. like this is one ton of weight just this pillar right here i mean just looking at that top stone i want to go and pull it in a bit and look you know you can it's see it's true. leaning over no. you know don't sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good kitties. Good kitties. Tom. Tom. Why do you get so freaked out, Tom? Leaving here, Michelle. He always like puts his feet on my hand. What are you doing? He's a yogi. <laughs> we gotta go. Big stretch. <laughs> All right. Love you. Love you, kitties. Love you. Oh, he's getting all playful. <laughs> all right, Tom. We'll see you back after class. We love you. <laughs> all right, it's a new day out here, isn't it, Terry? And now I can tell we are ready to do some chiseling. Terry's the expert on this, and he just explained how to use it properly. I've actually never used a chisel but our natural progress to move forward in this project is to get around this corner. We need to get out that debris. And the option we have is to haul it up and over the wall with buckets, or if we chisel out this rock, that'll give us like maybe a shoulder width distance. We can walk around here with the buckets. It'll be so much easier than trying to hoist them up. So that's our plan of action. Let's get to it this morning. The big challenge is not letting it drop on your toes. <laughs> Whoa, big chunk. Nice work. You gotta think like a cat. <laughs> You're quick on your toes. <laughs> that looks great. So we're gonna try to take out this face of this rock here and then clear it out and then start working on the next pieces. Do you crack here? Get in the crack, a couple of taps. So try to loosen up. Okay. Does this always stay on the same angle? Okay. Uh, more or less. You can twist it if you need to. So go straight in right yeah, now? Straight in, just tap it. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be deeper. Okay. And then if you want, come under there and that will just slide down. So you go From, over that side. Okay. Tap under there. Tap under there. And that should mind your foot. Get okay. Your feet out ah, because it'll drop. Ah, it's working in. Ah, it's working in. Okay. Oh, there's a crack there. Or go against the top against, part. Yeah, go okay. like diagonally down. Really? It might fracture it down this crack here. Okay.
You look like an angel back there. <laughs> the space back there my shoulders don't even touch between the house and this rock wall right here all the way down to my feet like we can get buckets right through here this is huge there was a lot of cutting grinding scraping hauling stuff away involved for that but look at that and a huge thanks to Terry he's a really great guy to work with such a hard worker he's lived in Portugal since I don't even know when like 25 years he's from the UK originally like ourselves he traveled the world he ended up in Malawi for a while he's been telling me a lot of cool stories about things he's done I'll probably ask him to explain it to the camera at some point in the future but right now I'm whooped he's whooped you ready for this I don't know if I'm ready I'm feeling it's gonna look like revolutionary my, this is huge. I you mean, could I do can, a dance in there. I can twirl. <laughs> I mean, look how thick these layers of stone are. Oh, makes me feel good though, actually. Yeah, I'm so much happier having this open. Somebody mentioned that we should put a hot tub back there. Ooh, I love that idea. That was an excellent idea. <laughs> I don't know, ideas, so many. Guys, we just have news of a Christmas miracle. We've been waiting for this for nearly a year now we had somebody come out here well before we owned this property and check with their magic guiding sticks for the magnetic lines of where the water was on our property and we just got the approval for our borehole our which well. if you don't know that means a well which is a huge part of our habitation license and the machine is in the area we can now get this scheduled because our license is approved that feels so good oh the highs and lows there are so many he just asked, do we want to schedule it for this week or <gasps> next week? Hmm. I don't know. We got to think about that. Another Christmas miracle was having our friend, who was also the realtor for the mill, come visit us with his family. Thank you, friends. They made us this beautiful, traditional Dutch apple pie. Do we cut this in slices or do we just go? No, <laughs> we just rip into it. <laughs> we just do no, we should cut it into slices. Yeah, it's I want to. I want to see the depth of the pie. Okay, agreed. It deserves that. Yeah. So I've actually never gotten a cake in a cake form before. A pie? Yeah, a pie. Anything. I don't know how to open it. Oh. Whoa! That opens. Oh my gosh! I don't know if I can handle this. This is all very exciting. Contain yourself. Oh my gosh! The first cut, you guys, into this perfect pie. Let's see if I did a good job, because you don't want to miss the bottom. That's always like the test of a good pie or cake slice. I think we did it. Wow.